So then Bristol City look to carry on their brilliant away form under Nigel Pearson as the Reds travel to Ewood Park uh, on Wednesday evening. And today I'm joined by uh, three peeps in a podcast host, um, Patch Warner, to uh, preview uh, Wednesday night's game at Ewood Park. Um, so, Patch, um, before we get on to, obviously, the Blackburn game, um, obviously, thanks for coming on and a pleasure to have you on yet again. Um, but... Let, let's just talk about our uh, win on Saturday against Birmingham City. It was, it was brilliant, wasn't it? It was, and it's always you never quite know what you're going to get in the last few games. So there's, there we know that they're all capable of putting in that sort of performance. And I, I think we described it on the podcast at the weekend as our complete, you know, most complete performance of the season so far. Everyone clicked. We we ripped out the heart of the midfield through um, you know tactical changes and injuries. Put three new people in there. Um, and it, it worked. It was, um, you know, Lansbury had, it was almost like a last chance saloon for Lansbury to impress the fans, and he achieved that. Um, and Masengo w- was back to his best as well, and Casey Palmer was just played out of his skin. So it was a really good performance. It's so nice to see when it clicks. That's all we want as fans is to be entertained and, and see everyone achieving a, a six out of 10 or a higher because then they've they've put in a shift and that's what we want to see. So always good to get, uh, to get three points on the road, clean sheet. Obviously, that was one we would have loved to have been at as fans. But um, yeah, it, it's great to see. But what we've got to do now is, is take that performance and take that into the next game. Yeah, definitely. It's always always brilliant to get three points away from home, but as well the, the three goals and obviously two uh, City players getting the, the championship team of the week. We'll talk about them now, actually. Um, Katie Palmer and Anton Sony. how good were they on Saturday? Yeah, so as I said, Casey Palmer obviously having a, having a newborn under his under his arm as well. Um, he is a player that we know is capable of of magic, absolute magic. Um, as I said, he's got to produce that every week now um, going forward. And some of the, the the through balls he was trying, and that goal that you know we didn't quite see it at the time how it came about, but it was through him tenacious chasing the ball down. And then and then running a good 20, 30 yards and slotting it home like someone who's been doing that all his life. It was a great performance, great goal, uh, great assist for Callum O'Dowda. And Antoine, you know, he's been our, our bright spark all season, really. Whenever he plays, generally, even, even when we weren't performing well, the spark would come from him. And it's just sort of getting that... that um, that end performance from him and him becoming the total package, he will be frightening. He just needs to obviously work on um, some of his decision making and finishing. But closing down, obviously, the, I think I, I watched the bench cam footage earlier, and you, you after he scored that goal, you heard one of the coaching staff. It might have even been Nigel Pearson say something like, "That's that's the only way he scores." <laughs> by chasing that ball down and you know you've got to be in it to win it so uh fantastic both and congratulations to both for being in the the team of the week as you say yeah definitely they were absolutely brilliant especially Casey Palmer now with the likes of Adam Nige coming back from his head injury and back in training at um back in training and then you've also got Liam Walsh Callum O'Donnell as well who we saw have uh, a few minutes after coming back from their long-term injuries. Do you think Casey Palmer has finally cemented his place in that starting eleven after a good few years? Um, I'm going to say not yet because he needs to do that two or three times on the trot, I think, to, to, to get that cementing. And, um, you know, Backinson has, be, has been played really well. He was unfortunately, he came off a bit of example made of him really um, in that last game where he was pulled off after 20 odd minutes. Um, but we know he's capable. We, we, we've often described him as having, you know, Yaya Torre, Patrick Vieira sort of uh, style of play. Obviously he's got a lot to, to develop still. He's still young. Um, so there's lots of competition for places. As you say, Naj has played well. Um, Masengo has come back in and had, and had one good game. Now he needs two or three good games, but They'll, they'll, they'll hopefully hold on to the shirt. Uh, but there's it's great to have that competition. Naj Viner, I like him as a centre midfielder. You've got um, Callum, um, Liam Walsh, who we've only seen a few minutes of, but we know what he can be capable of. 
uh, Callum O'Dowder, he's going to be challenging almost like Naki Wells, I'd say, for his slot. Because if you're going to play a front three, then O'Dowder is more suited to, to that Wells role than Wells is. But then Wells comes out of the team, that's goals coming out of the team. So there's lots of options, lots of competition for places. Um, and, you know, you've got further down the line, you've got... Um, uh, uh, Joe Williams as well. We're not. We're not going to see him probably again this season. We're not going to see Andy Vyman again this season. But it's all players that are capable of 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 seven, eight out of ten performances. And we're back to a place almost where we've got great competition. Nathan Baker coming back in potentially in the squad on Wednesday night. I'm hearing so, and then mixing into that, you've got the youth. So we've seen we've seen Sam Pearson, Sam Bell. Awara Edwards, um, and they've all staked a claim as well. So it's a great, it's, it's great times, but we can't lose sight of the fact that we are now basically 12th in the league um, and we are just building now for next season. So there's a few players that are going to go inevitably out of contract or, or leaving and going elsewhere. But if we keep Nigel Pearson, which I, I, I really believe we will, he will add quality to the ranks as well. So it's exciting times building into next season when we, fingers crossed, can actually go and watch it with our own eyes. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Definitely. It's been over a year since we were at Ashton Gate. But as you said there, there's players um, leaving in the summer that we can pretty much confirm now obviously it won't be confirmed for another few months but it does look very likely the likes of Kamara Jeju and um, uh, other players like that and with Nigel Pearson hopefully staying and um, looking like he does have long-term plans at City um, do you think with the last 10 odd games of the season we could see uh, the lineup that we will be seeing next season with maybe Naki Wells playing uh, at the top of that front three and maybe Semenya on the right O'Dowd on the left and um obviously the choice of midfielders that we have got it's going to be interesting isn't it i think uh, the sort of person that nigel pearson is if he if he determines from famara juju that he isn't going to sign i don't think you i don't think we'll see him in the team um and there's a lot of to and fro in dilly and dally and i think the first thing we need to do is secure nigel pearson so that he can say right famara are you staying with us yes or no um, and then we we go from there. But yeah, Naki Wells in the in the slot where Famara's playing, I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. He's he's better as a as a two. I can't see him as that spearhead of the attack. I think it, you need to play in a two. Um, but Chris Martin, you're not going to see him for the rest of the season. So that leaves us with almost not Marley Watkins as a, as a target man. Um, if, if Famara is not going to stay, but it's an interesting one because I, I don't know. I I've still, I'm still holding out hope that Famara will, will sign a contract. Um, if, if we finish the season strong and he can see that Nigel Pearson's got that intent to stay and to bring in some of his own players, why would you want to leave? Um, who, who knows what will happen there, but it's exciting times. We, we, we have to say that. Yeah, definitely. And before we do move on to, obviously, the, the Black Gun preview sort of side of this video, um, do you see if Jeju does it starting, we could have yet another change of formation, but maybe for the good this time, maybe play that um, like sort of four at the back, that diamond form in midfield, with maybe Backington on that, just the centre defence midfield, obviously a Dowd on the left, maybe Watkins or... Uh, someone Edwards or someone on that right and then Palmer just as a sort of centre attack and midfielder with maybe Naki Wells and Semenya as a, a duo up front. Yeah, I can see that. It's um there's and and you mentioned Edwards there. I, I think that now that we are consolidating and building and experimenting potentially for the next 10 games. Um, I think that he'll want to win every game as we as fans want to see see every game won. Um, but now is the chance to, to, to try out your, your Aurora Edwards, um, Sam Pearson, Sam Bell, because they, they're more than likely all going to go out on loan next season, you, you would expect. But 
if if they get a run in the team and perform, because we saw flashes of a war Edwards and before he got, um, you know, he had to uh, isolate and then he had, and then he picked up an injury, which was unfortunate, but, but he, the game he played in, he almost looked like he'd been there all season. So I'd like to see him tried more. Um, I know he played in the under 23s today. So be interesting to see whether he gets a, a shot in the next few weeks. I'm sure he will. Um, but yeah, the, why not experiment a bit more, change a few, change it up a little bit, and then it gives Nigel Pearce an option to think, right, well, okay, well, if I want to play like that next season, then I, I, I probably need a left back for sure. Um, I need probably a right back as well. Yeah. Um, but we are midfield wise, we're we're pretty spoilt for choice. If I'd like to see a few more performances like that from from Lansbury before I say, right, I think we need him next season. Um, and then, yeah, strike strikers as well. Chris Chris Martin is coming, you know, coming to the end, but he's in the twilight of his career. Um, so we probably need another striker uh, to, to complement that. But uh, yeah, it's not going to be wholesale changes. I think he'll just bring in uh, an extra bit of quality and and have that blend of youth coming through as well. Yes, definitely. As you said, going to be interesting with, as I said, only 10, 11 games left of this season. If um, as And we're, we're 12th in the league and it does look like we're safe from relegation. I think that three points that St Andrews did uh, easily confirm that. But yeah, I think it would definitely be interesting to see in the next few weeks um, the sort of style that Nigel Pearson will go for next season. I think we definitely will see that nearing the end of the season with the players he's starting uh, in that start eleven and the, the formation obviously as well. Um but let's let's move on to the uh Blackburn game then. As I said, we're twelfth in the league, four points um behind Blackburn obviously. Uh, are you confident uh with another away game at Ewood Park and uh hopefully another three points? Yeah, always confident when we play away. Um and I think I, I, I read somewhere that Bradley Dack came back from injury um, and quickly went out injured again. So um, he he's always a player that catches my eye and what someone that I think we were in for and didn't quite didn't quite get over the line. But um, I mean they they are they are a good side and, and I just think if we I can't see many changes to the team um, coming coming into the game on Wednesday night. Um, but you know, Odaida will be desperate to to get on again and and pick up where he left off. Um, and yeah, I, I just I just think we're we're away from home. You always fancy us, so I, I can't see past uh, another another victory by by a two goal margin on Wednesday. Um, and, and we we we've gone through a, a, a very strange period where where we've been up and then we've been on a big down and then we came up again and it was a bit of a wake up call for Nigel Pearson. So we're, we're hopefully sort of coming out of that again now, but it's just maintaining that. And even if, even if it's a draw, as long as we get that performance level of, of the six pluses and we don't drift down into the fives and fours and threes that we've given on, on the podcast in the ratings in recent months, um, fans will be happy. And if there is experimentation with, with uh, formations and different players, youth, et cetera, Fans will be happy as long as we see that performance level. So, yeah, coming back to your original question, Wednesday, I I, I can't see past a two a two goal victory. Yeah, I, and as you said there, um, Bradley Dax out what looks like for another long term injury. So, we've obviously seen Nigel Peterson play sort of the only two styles of football that you can really play, and that's to sit back and then look for the counter attack, but such as the first half against Swansea or the. Um, attacking fast flowing football like we saw um, in parts of yesterday and obviously parts of that second half against Swansea as well with one of uh, Blackburn's top men and top attackers out do you think we just need to go for it and go attacking fast football with likes of Casey Palmer and Semenyo um, starting an on form on Wednesday? My, my approach um, um, what I'd like to see all the time is we play our game. We don't worry about who we're playing against. And, you know, I, I haven't watched much of the Bristol City women this season, but they played the, the you know, one of their best games on, on that, um, that Monday against Reading and were really impressive. And then he, he changed the formation to try and counteract Chelsea. And, you know, I just use that as an example of play your own game, play to your strengths. And I'd like to see that more, more often than not. So, you know, it worked on Saturday. 
let's just 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 go for it again on Wednesday. Um, and you know, if it doesn't if it doesn't work, then he will change it. He, he we saw the other day that he he was not frightened to make changes halfway through the first half. Um, and you know, he made three substitutions in that first half. I know two were enforced, but uh, yeah, I think we have to play to our strengths. Ne- what, ne- I've never understood even sort of looking at the opposition and thinking, right, we're gonna change our change our the way we play, unless you're playing against some, you know, someone like Man City or something like that. Um, and we just went, but saying that when we played Man City at, at the Etihad, we we went on the front foot and attacked yeah. them. So uh, yeah, it's a it's a strange one, but I think you always have to play to your strengths, put out your best, put out your best eleven, and and go from there. Yeah, de- definitely. I think, uh, as you said, um, we've seen that's where the likes of Lee Johnson, for an example, did make the mistakes where we were on a good two, three game run for playing a football and then we come across a, I don't know, a Villa or a Leeds or a Forest and we change to a more defensive and then we go and l- lose a few games as well because we have changed, changed the start to 11 a lot and we have done that in the last few years and I think that's what's been a major part of the up and down sort of form we have had in um, recent years. So um, finally, before we do score predictions um, and then end off the video, um, we've obviously got, as I said a few times in this video, only 10, 11 games left and all of those are um, teams below us in the league apart from the last day of the season, which is Brentford. Would you like to see us um, go on a, very good run heading into obviously the the summer and the Euros and then hopefully get back into pre-season and start off uh, the new season on on a on a good yeah absolutely um we want to see that a because it will it will it will turn heads b it will hopefully make Nigel Pearson want to see what can be achieved next season C, it will hopefully keep hold of your likes of Famara and Liam Walsh. And D, who doesn't want to see us win? It's um, <laughs> exactly. it, it's something we really need as humans at the moment. It's something to cheer about. <laughs> um, and even though we're not there, you know, I was sat here watching the game uh, on the on the laptop and jumping up and down like I would do, like uh, as if I was in in the in the stadium and shouting and screaming. So. It, it gives us that release. We we look forward to it as fans, you know, what, uh, and a bonus again this Wednesday, we've got another opportunity and we just want to be entertained. I, I keep saying it, but we don't, we don't want to see defensive football. We want to see on the front foot football. We don't, we, we want, we want to see goals. Um, and, and that's hopefully what we will get. Um, I, I, I hate it when we would go one nil up and under Lee Johnson, and then we would throw a defender on, yeah. And sit back and and then let them invite the pressure on. I just never understood it, um, unless it's like you know that five minutes to go from the end or something like that. But when you when you go one nil up after sixty seventy minutes and then you throw a defender on or you go go defensive, it's just inviting the pressure on. It's like the Allen mode then for twenty minutes. So I've never understood that. But absolutely, let's finish the season on a high. It will it will boost the morale of the fans. It will it will boost season ticket sales because then people will want you know want to come back and watch watch the football in their droves and uh, it will get Nigel Pearson to see that we've got that potential and, and sign on the dotted line so um, yeah at, at, as it stands very excited but as we know with us Wednesday could come along Saturday could come along and ask me the same question again in a week's time and uh, <laughs> there might be some changes required yeah, definitely. And as you said, there's countless um, options and uh, proof why we do need to go on a good run uh, heading into the end of the season and ne- and obviously next season um, as well. But um, finally then, um, we're obviously hoping to continue our brilliant away form uh, under Nigel Pearson with um, nine goals and in, in three away from home. Uh, but as you said, do you think we'll be able to um, get that win? And um, who do you think is going to score? And uh, do you think we'll be able to bring three points back to Bristol? Yeah, 
hundred percent. Two nil. Gigi's going to score on on Wednesday because he's due a goal, and um, I can see Palmer getting another one. You know, with that burst forward and, and finishing like that, that's not something we've seen from anybody, let alone Casey Palmer. We haven't seen a goal like that for for many many, many seasons, seasons probably. Yeah. Um, so that's going to give him confidence. So yeah, two nil. Uh, Gigi to score first, and Casey Palmer to score second. I, better put a bet on that now i've said that <laughs> and a clean sheet <laughs> yeah another clean sheet and we just got miss. hold on to dan bentley as well yeah definitely we just could definitely see him going in the summer if it thinks things don't turn around but it, it does definitely look on and up and um thanks for thanks for joining me today patch yeah and then just to say um i'm looking forward to seeing that that uh that documentary um, of the Liverpool game. So uh, good work on pulling that together and look forward to seeing that. So um, when, when was that? 20th of March, was it? Uh, yes, yeah, so um, to, to all the watching, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe and turn the notification bell on. As obviously Pat just said, there's a documentary coming out on, on my channel on Saturday uh, before the Rotherham game, I think it's going to be out. Um, 20th of March and it's obviously as Patch said about um, Bristol City versus Liverpool in the FA Cup uh, uh, 27 years ago back in 1994 um, with countless fans stories of the days and obviously Brian Tinney and then obviously uh, Rob Edwards as well featuring it thanks to uh, a bit of help from Patch with that but yeah that'll, that'll be on the 20th um, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, looking forward to it. It's uh, my my story is that um, so I was well, how old was I? Um, what year did you say it was? Ninety four. Ninety four. Yeah. Yeah. So January. I was 12, 12 or thirteen, and um, I think my my brother and my my dad were going up to Liverpool, and they just they just wanted you know it was an away day. It's it's Liverpool. Um, I think they they and I can see now that they, they wanted to just go go by themselves and not have <laughs> not have someone else to worry about. Um, and I I watched it on the TV, but I remember the first two games as well. The the, the two the the game at Ashton Gate that got cancelled um, yeah. or postponed, I should say, due to the floodlight failure. And then it was the same scoreline, exactly the same scoreline in yeah, in the not? in the second one. So um, yeah, I watched it on the TV. Unfortunately, wasn't there. But uh, what what a night for Bristol City. And um, and Brian Tinian's uh, name etched in lights forever after that one. Yeah, definitely. And as you said in the documentary, that's stories from fans from all all three of the games, from walking out of the ground and wondering what's going to be happening next after the floodlight failure to um, the joy of joy, joy of winning at Anfield. But um, yeah, so so make sure to uh, look out for that one on Saturday. And um, uh, thank you all for watching. And hopefully the Reds, as we said, can. Um, keep up their brilliant away form recently and get three points on the road at Ewood Park. But yeah, thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys all on the next one. Come on, you Reds. <laughs>